So as you're going through the safe and sound protocol, there's a number of things that you might experience um, or you might not. Some of those things, just so you're aware of as you begin, uh, you might notice uh, jaw tightness, changes in that. Um, you might notice an itching or burning in your ears, like sort of deep inside. Uh, you could even get a, a light, low-grade headache. Um, you might notice just different sensations in the muscles around your eyes, cheeks. Uh, you might notice that you're swallowing more often than not. Um, I've also seen initially people who tend to not have a really uh, natural respiratory sinus arrhythmia and heart rate variability. Often the beginning phase, they'll, they'll yawn frequently or sigh, um, which is again their body trying to physiologically come back into that regulated ventral vagal complex. Um, you might also get very sleepy afterwards. Um, it, in essence, this is a neural exercise of the middle ear muscles, which becomes, because of this social engagement integrated system that Stephen Porges defined, becomes an exercise, a neural exercise for all of the striated muscles in the face and head. Um, so that's why you could notice different sensations, different things going on, tension, softness, all different subtle changes in the striated muscles in the face and head. Um, you might also notice changes in your breathing patterns while you're listening to the music. Um, again, sighing, yawning, those types of things, or just shifts in, in the breathing. If you're really in tune, you might even notice shifts in your heart rate variability. You might notice changes um, in how your heart is beating throughout, how it speeds up on the inhale and how it slows down the exhale. That might become more, more pronounced as you listen to the music and move more into a ventral vagal state of safety and connection. Um, you could even notice your stomach grumbling and uh, changes in your digestive system or elimination system. Um, because remember, uh, the nervous system is really the foundation for all of the other systems, the immune system, the inflammatory system, digestion and elimination. So. There could be all sorts of subtle shifts. The goal uh, during this protocol is to be receptive and open to just listening, not just paying attention to the music, but paying attention to the shifts in your physiology while listening and, and being open, uh, knowing the context of what's going on. In other words, if as you're listening to the music and you find yourself getting agitated or restless, that would be signs of mobilizing into fight or flight, your sympathetic nervous system. You don't want to grind through the protocol, um, but you can look at what's actually going on. And if you're able to self-regulate in that moment um, or to co-regulate with, with me as we're going through the process together um, and to, and to, reassure your nervous system that you're actually in a safe environment and you can calm down, then it's okay to continue on. Um, but if you get stuck in fight or flight, agitation, frustration, you don't just grind through. We just stop and, and start again on another day. Um, if you found yourself moving further down the autonomic ladder into dorsal vagal shutdown, collapse, um, falling asleep, uh, getting depressed, um, all kinds of things, feeling even more lonely, giving up, then it's time to stop as well. If you can't contextually come out of it and co-regulate uh, and move back up into a sense of open, uh, everything's okay, that safe and connected place, that would be another time that we would want to stop uh, and start over on another day. Um, not to suggest that any of that will happen, but it's possible. Um, the key is, is to continue feeling safe and connected while listening to the music, doing it with me or another trusted other, um, if I'm unable to be with you, and to be in a safe environment where there's no low frequency noise. Um, in other words, no refrigerators running, uh, air conditioning or heating units or 
where you can hear traffic outside or the rumblings of any low frequency noise. Um, your nervous system, just like mine, is hardwired to detect those low frequency sounds as cues of danger in the environment. So you want to minimize low frequency noise around you. You don't want to use uh, noise canceling headphones because they create their own frequency. So we just want over the ear closed or semi closed headphones. Um, and we want to be in a safe and quiet environment and with a trusted other who is present. Um, and you want to be open to the music. You don't have to pay close attention to the changes. It's, it's going to sound like the volume is getting quieter and louder, but that's just more or less frequency range. It's also going to move back and forth, left, right. And you don't have to pay specific attention to what's really going on. You may. It's really up to you. Um, just be receptive with your nervous system and your ears and your physiology into trusting that it's this is a passive portal into regulating uh, your physiology, changing in a healthy way your heart rate variability, your respiratory sinus arrhythmia, bringing your nervous system back into homeostasis, which is that ventral vagal complex for health, growth, resiliency, performance, um, creativity, opportunity. So that's what's going on here. This is a, a sort of a jump start, a catalyst to reassuring uh, your nervous system that it's okay to be safe. It's okay to be ventral vagal. Um, so that's it. See you soon.